Hi, everybody. My name is Jean Feinberg. These are my two works in the show. These two works in black and white are from an ongoing series called What Shadows We Are, What Shadows We Pursue. The title was one I found in a quote, which was probably political, although that's not how I'm using it. Um, the series is all in black and white, and I've been working in black and white for a few years, strictly in black and white, which is unusual for me. Um, perhaps it could represent the politicized and polarized times we're in, but actually I didn't think of it that way. I had been working previously with a lot of color. In fact, the work was all about very specific color and mixing color. And I never allowed myself to use black, either as a color or in the mixtures. So this was a real unusual departure for me when I started the series and I started using black as a color and limiting my palette to black and white. The way I found the color and the shapes is the way I have been working for quite a while, which is that in my studio, I always have a lot of color chips, paint chips, color swatches, color aid paper in my studio and on my work tables. And the first piece of this series I saw on my work table and it was a black shape and I was very taken by it and that became the first piece of the series and I was so intrigued with that that I decided to go forward just working with black and black and white. So an unusual departure but one I'm just continuing to work with now. Uh, you can see that the supports that I use are unusual. They're not canvas. They are actually rather low grade construction materials. And many of the cuts on them also are not precise or machine-like. I got to using plywood as a support actually in the previous work I had been doing in color because I wanted something that had a sort of textural um, character to it. And I had been working on some gouache pieces on Japanese paper, and I loved the Japanese paper and the texture that it had. So I was looking for some kind of a support other than canvas that could give me a sense of texture or pattern that would be the grounding for what I was gonna do on them. I purposely sort of gently gesso them so that the pattern in the wood is very visible. I like the patterning that happens. In both of these pieces also, there's a secondary piece of wood which takes on almost a pinkish hue because the texture of the surface is slightly different. So with this one, I'm contrasting the two kinds of whites that happen. And you may notice, obviously, that it's an extra piece of wood on top of the plywood. This one has an extra piece of wood, but then also the painted shapes. A lot of people think that my pieces are collage because they look like that. And, and I guess the wood is a sort of collage element, but the the shapes that look like they could be paper are, are not. They never are. They're always painted oil paint. Just to address the paint quality, I always mix oil paint and I mix it to a very matte consistency because I'm interested in the kind of density and the light absorption that happens with a very dull matte surface rather than a shiny surface. I don't want the shine to distract from the color. That's probably a leftover from the color work I have been doing, but it's continued into this body of work. The next thing that is probably evident in my work or question, how do you arrive at your compositions? 
And again, uh, the what's around me in my studio, my work tables, the scraps of paper on my work tables, the scraps of wood in the studio are what generate my compositions. I like to say that um, they're sort of found still lives. So I'm very engaged in not purposefully arranging things, but I like to say that what's in my work is a found, like a found still life. It's something that I see almost in my peripheral vision and I go with it. I like the idea that uh, it feels very honest. It feels very much like a zen, the Zen impulse is the first impulse and that's always what I go with and I don't try to alter it. And I was reading recently about something called Oakham's Razor, which I had no idea what that was. It turns out it was a sort of philosophy that the simplest, most direct approach is somehow the divine miracle. And I do feel that way about it. With this body of work, I find that the more austere they are, the better they are. I don't want them to get fussy. I don't want them to take on this sort of pretty quality, <laughs> um, but fussy maybe is a better word. They just, they have a certain austerity and I, I like to go with that. They're very material, obviously. I'm very engaged with the materiality of the supports and the paint itself has a sort of dense materiality as well. I like using some of the irregularities that I find. It might be, you know, the accidents of this plywood. It might be the accidents of little cuts. It might be the irregularity of an edge or something that happens like this. I really accept and embrace all those things. And sometimes I really emphasize it like in the irregularity, let's say, of an edge, even in the painted areas. I like to embrace those imperfections and contrast them with what I think is um, the sort of perfection or the way that I apply the paint, which is very smooth, very even, even though some of the edges might be irregular there's a very exactness to the edges. And I am not a storyteller in my work. My work is very non-objective, non-referential, and um, I've always been interested in following that path in my work. So you're really left to just contemplate what you see directly of the materiality of the work. One other thing I can say, and maybe just reiterating what I already said, is that I'm very interested in chance and accident because in this whole series, if you were to see all the other ones, the fact that the paint configurations, how the paint configurations happen, how the panels interact with each other has a, a, a lot to do with that. I really trust what I see and what's out of the corner of my eye and what strikes me right away as something that just works and I go with that. So that's my work. I hope you enjoyed this and um, I hope you get to the Albany Institute to see the show because I can see it looks great. And if you'd like to see more of my work, you can go to my website, jeanfeinberg.com, or see work on Instagram and also under my name, Jean Feinberg. Thank you.